Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Talk Track Mania. We are here episode number 32. We have some new topics once again to bring to you. I'm your host TM Scotsman and as always I'm joined by my two lovelies which I believe are now to my left although I'm probably wrong. No, my right. There we go. I managed that for once but we have Luckers Turbo with us and we have Shorty with us in his best position as well as the second out of all of us however yes. uh, we are getting good to go of course for today it is tuesday it is talking track mania time once again uh, of course podcast as always brought to you by esac.gg however guys we do have a few topics to uh, go through today of course a few things which have been happening within the past week or so but uh how well how have you guys been doing over the past week or so <laughs> Most important question of the week. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have some PTSD, but else I'm fine. Uh, Uh-oh. Well, what I mean, oh, you know what happened. I just... <laughs> okay, so Paul, listen right? up. So I played a map with um, like beam balance parts, okay? Okay. has like 1,800 of them. I could have seen the finish. It has no checkpoints, and I fell down. Right. First question, why? Yes. Because why why was this attempted? Sub goal. Sub goal. Oh my god. And yeah, I mean, I'm doing good. I can laugh about it now. Of course, I'm memeing. I'm fine, really. I'm good. I just went for 10 kilometers. Was great weather. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm just going to attempt it again. I can already laugh about it again. So yeah, I was just dumb. Wanted to go for a safe way. But yeah, how are you doing, Paul? And how are you doing, uh, Mr. Shorty, who has a different, uh, yeah, He's in a different environment, let's say, like this. Are you in a gym? <laughs> uh, sadly, I'm not in a gym. Or let's 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 be honest. I'm happy I'm not in the gym. Uh, I I drove all the way back home four and a half hours today just for you guys, so you could finally <laughs> see okay. me without legs because the internet is still broken at my uh, place, and we are still waiting for a technician to finally like. Uh, fix our internet connection tomorrow hopefully but uh, i'm i'm actually at home because i'm gonna get vaccinated in two days oh, and cool. it was quicker for me to get it, uh, to get an appointment here so that's why i'm here but i'm here one day earlier because of this <laughs> cool. but otherwise than that i mean uh, it was an interesting week with living with, or trying to live without as, as little internet as possible watching everything in three, third, uh, 360p after so many years of finally like uh, I mean, you know it, right? Everyone had yeah. that that face when you when you didn't have good internet, <laughs> and you had you were forced to watch it like that back in the days. And now I was forced to live like that for another <laughs> week again. It was no. horrible. I had that as well when I was moving. It was you know I I was doing so many other things. I was actually down. I had one RPG map that I I don't know where the way was. I figured I'll like have a day how it's going. <laughs> I was doing so many stupid things, plugging in my old mobile phone to check everything, and yeah, I just know the feeling, but I didn't uh, yeah, watch any Twitch streams back then, so yeah. <laughs> but I know the feeling. Back in the good old days. But I mean, it's it's like, situations like that really kind of let you value what you have when you realize, oh crap, I haven't had to worry about YouTube videos buffering for like <laughs> six years, you know? <laughs> like yeah. that That's a thing as well. But yeah, uh, I mean, at least in terms of uh, here, I'm not being absorbed by the sun for once. It's only, well, the sun's actually not out at all, which is, I mean, that's just Scotland in a nutshell, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, uh, all's going good. But I think also all has been going good within the last week of Trackmania side of things. We have had a few things <coughs> coming out, a few that some of us have been directly involved in, and some things that we may in future become directly involved in some of the things which i thought would be good uh, <clears throat> good to talk about today of course uh competition side of things that i'd put the title it's kind of competition update full we'll say it like that uh, we have just finished the gamers assembly summer edition which was uh quite a hastily arranged uh at least trackmania tournament which did happen over the last weekend if i'm correct Yep. And also, uh, it was announced at the end of the Z-Land, which did also feature Trackmania uh, and the kind of 
multi-game competition, a multi-game streamer team competition, if I'll say it like that, if he's even got a title as fancy as that, I don't even know. But uh, the Zeland tournament organised by Zerator, which a number of uh, Trackmania personalities were at, I believe, uh, Sudami XX was there, uh, you had Bagheera Jones was there, uh, you had others like, I think Wingo Bear was there, if I'm correct, and potentially Schultz. Uh, Bren so, and Gwen. Yeah, Bren oh. and Gwen as well, unfortunately. Bagheera Jones didn't play, and Schultz also mm -hmm. wasn't in the team, I think, but they were guests or something. Yeah, so they, they, they attended. It was a lot, yeah. for a lot of the... Uh, for a lot of the French kind of personalities, shall we say, uh, you know, a big event for them, of course, and uh, definitely looked like it was pulled off well. Uh, however, it was announced at the end of it that there will now be a, now another Zerator Trackmania Cup. Ex excuse, excuse me, Turbo. Uh. <laughs> but there will be another uh, ZRT Trackmania Cup edition. I forgot the exact date, but it's going to be in the middle of July. I believe the 16th, if I'm correct. Uh, however, the mapping will be starting within the next few days. I believe it will be on Friday. The mapping will start. It's going to be a start on the 12th, actually, which is probably Friday, but it's on the, on the 12th. I'm really sure about that. Okay, well... One of us or both of us is right anyway. But yeah, a uh, few little changes will be coming up for this edition. And uh, definitely, of course, ZRT Cup's always, uh, you know, one it, we, at least Eric Holdal has wet dreams about when he sees the kind of numbers that brings in for Trackmania. But also as uh, an event that uh, typically engages a lot of the French community. And of course, uh, you know, kind of multinational representation as well does trickle in in some cases. But uh, guys... If we'll start off with the, the Trackmania Cup, since I suppose that's that's been what the, the biggest topic has been recently. Uh, I mean, first of all, are any of you planning to take part in it? Yes. Thank you. Mm, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never took part in any of the ZRT Cups yet, so I never even registered. <laughs> I actually took part in one. Went full no train and I got through like <laughs> three rounds, I think. Wasn't it 219 or something? 218. Mm, probably 218, I'm reckoning. You know, like since then, I've just become a bitter old, you know, tech player that's salty about everything and hates anything that isn't, that's that's not on tarmac, you know. But no. But uh, one of the, the main things about it, of course, is it's now going to be a three man tournament in the sense of you're being teams of three and you will be competing against other teams of three the rules i don't believe are exactly released so you know if it's going to be that the three will can you know try and get a maximum amount of points if it will be a funky system like <clears throat> the the zealand where i think it was if your team member finishes last you get eliminated. So, I mean, oh. Zerator definitely has thrown a lot of curveballs throughout his tournaments. I mean, his map mapping style is basically the definition of a curveball. But, yeah, I mean, uh, there's definitely a lot of potential for this. And there's always uh, something in ZRT which I feel kind of brings something new to the table in Trackmania. But, I mean... Uh, what do we kind of think of this edition? Is as far as I'm aware, it won't be an edition that will have a LAN event final uh, due to the ongoing pandemic, if I'm correct. It will just be an online final. Uh, but I mean, uh, Turbo, as one who has participated in a great deal of the uh, Trackmania Cups over the years, uh, I know at the very least over the past few, you've, you've uh, trained a lot for them. You also uh, attended one uh, with a few of the other people. I believe that was 219, if I'm correct. Uh, but I mean, how does this edition stack up when you you've seen it's been announced? You see, you know, a little bit of a few different things that have been thrown into the table. And what's your kind of gauge of uh, what people's hype level is for this at the moment? I mean, the Raider Cup is always hype. It's always great to play it. Also, the feeling, um, you know, it also started at the Raider Cup four for me, and I was playing all editions, whether it was just for just for fun. In two editions, I tried hard, got to the round of eight. But last year was super, super hard to just, um, yeah, like go into the top 128 or something. It was ridiculous. It was such a stacked tournament. And I think this year it will be the same. I mean, it's a different format with a three-man format. So I'm looking forward to that, to just find people who have the same intention as I have. Participate in there, have some fun, you know, try to push the limit a bit. And um, also watching the mapping streams and everything, it's usually a lot of fun also watching Zerator as a person, even though you don't understand too much, 
but of course you are surrounded with a lot of French if you're in a trick in the trackmania scene so you understand a bit of it or just hang out in team speak or discord with your friends and then just watch it so I'm I'm a fan of that because usually in games you always have this summer hold where there's nothing happening everyone is outside and this is not the case in trackmania it's the opposite and Zerato is pulling off insane amount of numbers so it is creating a good amount of hype so I'm always looking forward to that because I usually like that map style as well. Uh, I mean, that's a bit uh, controversial, but I mean, I, I, I really like it. And of course, Shorty is like, oh my God, how can you like something like that? But this guy's playing tech anyway and builds bad track of the day. So why is he even complaining? <laughs> Just kidding. Wow. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm still salty. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm of course joking, Shorty. But um, I yeah, hope so. <laughs> It's just my map, so I, I just uh, have it very good in there. And also, he's, every time when something is coming out at this or like before the Zorator Cup, something new is happening. I mean, we have the bumper blocks, the no grip, and those things were released, I think, at Zorator Cup 2018, 2019, something was, like that. Uh, 18, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. And then we also had the new game coming out with the, with the Raider Cup last year. So I think maybe something is something new is happening as well because I think. There is the E3 or something, and then Zerator is starting his mapping stream afterwards. So maybe there's something coming afterwards. Maybe, maybe. I have no idea, but um, it's always great because there's always a change and a little bit of more hype in the game. I mean, in terms of this, uh, sure, you, I mean, I, as you said, you've never really played it yourself. And, well, at least you've not necessarily been on podcasts talking about it. Not exactly been the biggest fan of this kind of style of uh, at least mapping but is it just the kind of mapping that kind of puts you off or is it just that you know shorty just doesn't feel like playing these type of tournaments no it's definitely just the mapping you know um every single time i'm uh, I'm, I'm thinking about it and uh, people like uh tobo ask me oh sure you should play this and stuff you know <laughs> like like it happens often same with marius and other people and every time i'm like yeah, I mean, I should probably still be able to do rather well on those kind of maps. And and then I watch like the mapping from the writer. And at the first, I'm like, yeah, yeah, this, this is fine. This is fine. Yeah, I'm doable. And then he starts mix mapping all of it. And it just goes down. And like, just, it's, it, I don't know. It's, I, I just don't really feel the maps. I, I even played some of them, but uh, it's just. You, you definitely like like as uh, as uh, Tobo already said like the competition is getting so tough like really really tough yeah and um, you don't have to like full train and you don't have to go for a high position but if I already don't like training the maps uh, you know I just don't feel the map style at all like I have nothing against it obviously it's great and uh, you can't say it's it's bad maps or anything like that it's it's unique it's it's his style and uh, a lot of people like that obviously right so. Nothing is wrong with that. It's just I never really had a, a competition of ZRT that that I was like, yeah, this this is something I could see myself actually playing. Maybe, maybe this season, you know, you never know. Uh, the new game is definitely a lot different in mapping, like a lot different, and uh, that might actually that also might influence his, his mapping style a bit. Uh, also, considering we are, I think it's pretty much confirmed that we are getting new blocks, kind of. Or at least like one new block or whatever that Severine was. Um, so he's definitely going to use that a lot in his maps. And depending on what kind of blocks those are, um, the maps are going to be very difficult or different. So let's 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 see how it goes. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to watch the mapping streams as well. I'm going to kind of enjoy them. <laughs> but uh, as far as as far as me competing in ZRT goes, um, it's not really my tournament. Usually, let's let's see how it's this year. I got more free time than than ever. So in theory, there's mm -hmm. nothing really speaking against that. So let's see, right? But I mean, you've you've mentioned a good point. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is so hard to really. Yeah, just uh, participate in this event because you have to know life so much. And I remember 2019, I was playing day in, day out. And then there's just, again, pressure coming to your head and you just throw it away and don't make it to the round of four into the quarterfinal. And it's also stacked up. And last year it was even more stacked up. And then I remember this in Golo Cactus map, maybe you know that, with such a risky line with a small gap that you had to hit 
and you can only hit it if you had 160 kilometers per hour at this part it was like it was like something super ridiculous with muscle memory and you had those things or like like at least two to five maps or something i don't remember yep. what, what maps but it's just so hard to really cope with the pressure in that way as well if it's important for you and uh, you really have to be cooled down and beating players um and make it into the semi-final or even into the money it can get really hard because you know there's only quote unquote 2k uh year of price money involved but of course it's a show it's prestigious it's very prestigious probably the yeah second most prestigious event in trackmania so it is uh yeah, great to see that. I will definitely participate, but just for fun, you know. I'm not gonna aim for a semi-final, for quarter-final, or a round of eight. I just try to do my best and just have fun, you know. And How about a podcast fun. team, then? Yeah, I mean, we could do it, of course. I mean, I would be up for that. It is fine. If you're just gonna participate for fun, I mean, those couple of, yeah, of hours course. of training, I can definitely do. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> of course, I will play the maps a little bit more, but even... If you don't play that much, we could definitely play. I, I would be up for that. <laughs> Scotsman is thinking like, oh no, Trackmania, oh no, I have to play. I'm just here sitting. I'm just going to talk about it. I don't want to play it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just here to fucking talk about Trackmania. What do you think this is, guys? Do you think this is a crossover episode or something? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Erwin just writes in the chat, he's going to be the coach. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, see, perfect. Know. You need to put that down as a sub goal then, Turbo, and see how we go. <laughs> wow, okay, so uh, how many subs should it be? I don't know. I don't even know how many 5, subs. 5,000. <laughs> I can't I mean, check. Wait a minute. See, like, one of the things I always thought about ZRT Cup, because, like, coming out of 2017, 2018, I always kind of thought the same of you, Shorty, because we were, we were kind of playing these same kind of types of tournaments. As I felt like people like you and me were very versatile players, and as such, if we wanted to, could perform very, very well at ZRT Cup. But I mean, for me, I would, I would be going into like ZRT Cup would be announced. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do it this time. You know, I'm gonna put all the time in. I'm gonna play it. And then I get about like I'll get one map through, and I'll think, hmm, decent time here. You know, this is all right. And then I'll try one map, which is just awful, and I'll be like, no. No, I'm not doing this to myself, you know, that's what happens to me whenever I you want to play this. You know the thing is, I wouldn't even say I would do very, very well, I would just say I would do good, well, but in terms of my capabilities as a driver, I'm I'm really good in, in, in certain aspects, but I'm really bad at steering, like precise steering or, or something like that, I'm I'm horrible, just, I'm, I'm like Marius, but worse, like Marius now can, can jump straight again, but I just, everything that's a straight jump or in general tight gaps or anything, I just can't do them. You know, I, I just can't do them. <laughs> so, so it, it, Zada Decaps has so many of those tight gaps, you just had got, got a nail. And especially it's even worse with pressure, right? When, when yeah. you're like trying to have something precise and you're already bad at precise movement and then all of a sudden you're nervous, it's just not going to go that well, you know? <laughs> I know. I mean, it is one of these tournaments that is... I mean, I think some would argue it as being the most prestigious event in Trackmania over the past, at the very least, over the past few years, for sure. I mean, just garnering the amount of exposure it gets, albeit almost exclusively limited to one country. I mean, you do have, you know, some international interest from some players who will play it, you know, either for the exposure they can then get for themselves or for the prize money or because they do enjoy it themselves, of course, but of the French, you know, interest and the French players, the French uh, and influencers, the French amount of exposure is exponentially, of course, higher. So, I mean, it's it's by far and away, I would say, the most prestigious event in France, like, or for French people, I would say. You know, we've seen people having streaming careers made over their involvement in Zeritor Cup. Some people who have, you know, quite a few Twitch streamers who have got verified just simply from the fact that yeah. the amount of in interest and the amount of uh, exposure they've gained from, say, uh, I mean, one thing, not that I'll, uh, you know, solely accredit it to it, because obviously he's, he's, a, he's a good streamer and I get on well with him, but uh, Sirime, uh, you know, would stream all day uh, ZRT Cup training and he would go from, like, you know, five, ten viewers to now up in the hundreds of viewers every time he streams, and I would put a large part of that down to the audience base he gained through his continued participation in Zeritor Cups and also being one of the 
few people early on who was streaming a lot of their training, going back to like 2015, 16, 17, along with the likes of Schultz, you know, uh, and, and some others there, you know, a lot of people have gained a lot of popularity through that. But of course, I mean, mostly uh, from the French side of things. But I mean, in, in terms of this this event, where, where does this event fit for you guys when we talk about the prestigious side of, or, or, or the prestigious holds, rather? Is this event that does rival, surpass, fall short of something like a Trackmania Grand League? Do we look at, I mean, are you an Eirik that looks at the figures? You know, are you a player that's looking at, you know, the prize money? Are you a spectator, you know, that's looking at how many different people from different countries are looking at this? How, how do you guys kind of weigh this up against other events? I think it's the mixture of everything, actually. So um, for me, be, because I so I think I the first time I participated was in the Raider Cup 4. I was practicing together with Danio and Plasterex back then because they, we were just uh, Trackmania Nations boomers, you know. And then uh, Plasterex also played the Raider Cup 3. And we were playing because there was a free trip for the semifinal. You know, you play on stage. So it's the prestigious fact to play on stage. We don't care about the stupid price money. If you make it into the semi-final or into the final, it doesn't matter. It's only that you can spend time with the people that have also made it. You get a free trip, you know, you get a good exposure. So I think that's the main reason why people have participated. Also for me in 2019, that's why I tried hard. But I mean, this kind of changed for me a bit in 2019 because I went there as a spectator. And spectating this event, even though I understand shit on this, I understand nothing from the Rater. Maybe like something left or right or you know what. But the the the, the gameplay is saying more than 1,000 words. And also if you're with people there and the community, it is just the best thing. And this really uh, changed the mind for me. Because seeing it as a spectator and rooting for someone, we were rooting for Mad and Revolution. Because they were the complete underdogs and they actually made it to the final. Um... You know, that was also very great also to see your friends making it into the final or just batting it out against each other. So that was great. And I mean, maybe now in 2020, I mean, it was the incentive why the game was released. Everyone played it and it got prestigious because everyone just played, you know, and that's not the same with Trackmania Grand League. And I think in this way, to come back to your original question, you cannot really compare uh, the TMGL with the Zerator Cup because those events are so unique, especially with the um, yeah, with it, uh, it's taking place um, annually, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the uh, Zerator Cup is definitely the biggest event, the big, biggest track mania event by far, like by viewers. Uh, I mean, price money not anymore. Um, I think it actually used to be for like one year or so at least the biggest one in price money as well. But in general, like the price money is not really that big of an incentive for for most players. I think, um, especially like already just because it's so tough to to even get to the point where you even get a, a, a noticeable amount of money. Like it's 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 beyond. You can't just count on that. Like you can't go. Yeah, I'm gonna compete for that, and and I gotta I'm gonna have a shot at it. It's very difficult but the newer, newer numbers are so high the, uh, the, the player numbers are, are so high i think the biggest ones by far in for any tournament in in the game and uh, what what i th what i don't what, what the thing is about the prestiges of it um usually it would have the, the lan event obviously like the dan finals that's that's a big a big thing for 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 events for me as well like th that's that's the that's the main reason why um, even in the year where you had the Gamers Assembly and the first World Cup by Nadeo, which was basically like Nadeo's more or less try at having a, a prestigious tournament. I mean, oh, wait, wait, the, the World Cup actually also had LAN Finals, but you know what I mean, right? Uh, if you have an online tournament compared to LAN Finals, like LAN Finals are so much more prestigious. Um, the, the thing about ZRT Cup is though, that even though it's the biggest Trickmania event, um, a big part of the viewer numbers and a big part of, of the players are actually just only there for ZRT. So they are just um, either they are just watching because it's the Raider, or they are also a lot of them are also just playing the game for the Raider Cup. And then, yes, some of them keep playing for a couple of weeks, maybe months. But, but, but a big part of the player base from ZRT Cup usually is just really there once a year. Mm, I mean, we have. Uh, yeah. 
we have a lot of people who actually, uh, I mean, I was in Trackmania 2 back then, when the Zerator Cup was still a niche, and people were building Zerator maps, and I was also on Team Eden back then, and they were a Zerator team, you know, they were, in, uh, they are now a tech team, and um, we played Zerator maps against, I think, the likes of even Hugo, and all those people, like, against so many players who are now so good and I think a lot of people have actually started and are now on their peak of Trackmania just because of the Raider that they discovered the game and I think those are more players than you expect uh, Shorty but of course the majority is going again if there are 10,000 people participating not 10,000 will stay but I think that yeah. still we have we had a lot of people um, in the past participating in every Zerator Cup edition and maybe just like okay maybe this game is just very good and I like to play in as well and I think there are players who have really grown throughout this whole uh, Zerator event and also with that uh, just playing other events but yeah of course it's the hype is going afterwards but it's always like that after an event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's difficult to say how prestigious it actually is, you know, especially for me because I just don't like it personally. Like, that's how it goes, you know. I like the event itself, I like what he does and stuff, but it's still just an event hosted by one streamer. And let's be honest, yes, he does like the game a lot and he does a lot for the game, but he's also doing it because it works well for him and for his stream and for himself. That's, that's undeniably always uh, part of, of why you do something. So, um... Yeah, it's difficult to say how how prestigious it is when it's just basically hosted by one guy. It's it's difficult to say, right? It's it's very it's very very big and it's also very professional. So it's definitely very prestigious. It's just uh, compared to what other events look like, it's very special as well. So that's hmm. difficult to rate. Yeah, it's always difficult to rate, and that's what I was stating the uniqueness of this event. It's great to have something like that in Trackmania. I think that it's really helping the game out, um, but I mean, there, there's one thing that I think uh, Scotty and me talked about one year ago already. It's that they just rely on solely those, like, how you can say them, influencer, like Zerator, for example, and then also Trilux for the German scene, you know, you have those people and they're just relying on them to just host that cup because what would happen if there was no Zerator Cup? I think uh, Trackmania would be in a worst stage because you know the subscription model is on the first of july it's renewing again for the first time of course there are people having the three-year subscription but then of course yeah the zerator cup is coming in again and what had what would happen if the zerator cup all of a sudden would not take place anymore i think the interest would really degrade in the game and i think the game is really capitalizing from that so i partly agree with you what you're saying shorty and i think we just meet in the middle um because I think that, uh, yeah, of course, a lot of people are only playing because it's Raider Cup, and some are just sticking to the game. Then, mm -hmm. I mean, you look at you look at how the the scene has kind of evolved. Not, no, I'm not talking about like the tech scene, the dark scene, or so on, but just the kind of scene of players of of com competitive players and how that's kind of evolved over the past few years. Primarily, the top level of that was made up by elite level tech players. You know, you had some people who were coming in from other backgrounds, uh, you know, who you could uh, classify as an elite player, even though they might not have been a great tech player, or sorry, not exactly an elite level tech player at that time. So we talk about Papu, you know, someone like that. Bren hadn't yet reached his tech peak by these sort of times in like, you know, 2016, 17, but was still an elite level uh, you know, RPG player and so on. But now it is primarily dominated by people who have either been elite level tech players and transitioned into, uh, you know, being more multi style, you know, being able to cope with the likes of TMGL, ZRT, and so on. But also uh, a big amount, not just of the elite level players, but of really high level players, are made up of people who were, uh, who gained a lot of interest in this game through the ZRT Cup, you know, either directly through the ZRT Cup, as in people who have started playing within the past six or seven years or something like that, or indirectly through the ZRT Cup. Like, we'll give an example of Gwen. So Gwen, of course, has been playing this game since he was fucking minus five. But, like, in terms of uh, how he's actually evolved through the game, he was one of the very, very early adopters of ZRT 
tournaments and ZRT teams. Like you were talking there about how when you were back in Eden, you used to play against a lot of these players. And a lot of these players are now coming out at the very top level of the game. And it was something I remember I spoke about uh, quite a while ago. I remember we were talking about how I felt that a lot of French people really had an edge when it came to Trackmania Grand League because instead of for the from you know 2014 to 2018, everyone else was practicing tech. These guys were all practicing ZRT, you know, these sort of tournaments, and they were honing their overall skills. And you're really now seeing that come to fruition. You know, you see the entirety of like the old OSERF teams or the you know some of the Eden teams. You know, I was looking back in old screenshots and saw some of these players like Glass, Dofault, you know. Gwen himself, uh, you know, we talk about some other players who are still now really young players, but were at the bottom level, you know, a good few years ago and have really risen by the fact that they have this massive opportunity, this massive motivation in the ZRT Cup and it is bringing them back year upon year. And most of all, not just, you know, like bringing them back or, you know, they'll play, motivating them to train and do these practice tournaments, play these practice matches and improve. And we've seen that because we're seeing, I mean, Yannick stopped playing Trackmania for quite a while after the the old VSP lineups stopped Mm. being around back in like 2015 or something like that. However, really had a resurgence through the kind of multi or ZRT style. And now, you know, he's been in Trackmania Grand League. He's been fighting... For some top spots, you know, he's, he's a popular streamer. We look at many other players who are either in Trackmania Grand League or are on the very verge of being Trackmania Grand League as a result of the development either they've sought by continuing practicing, new motivation, like Papu's became a tremendous all-rounder through the sheer amount of dedication he's put into cups like ZRT. Uh, you know, players like Aurel, one of the earliest players in the finals of the ZRT Cup was was a very early adopter. So you see not only the impact in terms of viewerships and in terms of, you know, people just like, sure, there's a, a very large majority of players that will just play it very, you know, temporarily, so to speak. But I think when you kind of take a step back and remember that people like Gwen haven't been at the top level for a long time, You know, you realise that a lot of these people either came directly from it or had a big, uh, or or ZRT has played a big role in their career, either, you know, motivation wise or just simply uh, through what they've gained directly from it. Yeah, good point, actually. Good point. It's just uh, probably also the shift that is coming into play because, Mm -hmm. you know, the other players are getting older and older. I mean, there are rumors. rumors (laughs) rumors <laughs> and but you know they're the 16 17 18 years year old players coming in now i mean we see binks coming into play there's also soldier who's also not the oldest player of course older than some other players but you know gwen also like only 16 years old turning i think 17 this year but i i just certainly don't know if that's what right what i said to so about soldier but i think he's also a bit younger but you know those players who were um, starting with the Zerator Cup, I mean, Glass, Dofal, and all the people actually are now maybe replacing the older players. Maybe that's the case. That's we fair. don't know. But um, gonna find it out very soon. I think maybe in two to three seasons when the Trackmania Grand League is still there, we're gonna see it then. But maybe, of course, the old players can also stand a chance. I mean, we don't know how, how it's working out, age, reflexes, and all those things, but um yeah i mean it's getting harder and harder i mean i already can feel it i'm washed up i was very good back then in 2015 but now i'm you can put me in the trash can and i mean i cannot even <laughs> finish the stupid b map there without hey. falling down <laughs> <laughs> can't um, even balance exactly <sighs> yeah but if i if you, i mean if you if you like uh scotty you just kind of like talked about that at he and uh and team gl and i think something that's important there if like the, the change does all, i mean always new new players and young players come in definitely but i think something that 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 has to be said is that um ZRT is is very prestigious, obviously, right? That's 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 a fact. You, like we we, we we try to talk about how how much of it, but in general, it's it's very prestigious and it's a very big event, and it influences a big part of the Trackmania scene and Trackmania in general. And part of that is obviously the identities of TMGL maps, oh. and um, and 
if you're already going down that road, right? Um, the the, the change uh, already like in, in a couple of years ago with, with, with the start of TMGL, um, maybe even with maybe even before with, with, with ZRT actually also already. Um, you see those players like those big players that used to be like the main players back when when tech was considered the main style and the, and the biggest style and nothing else could compete in terms of world champion like it always was a tech player um you had like that rt and and tmgl coming in and and a lot of players just just didn't didn't care but like like, like me for example you know I, I don't like the style and a lot of other players like te the older you are the, the less likely you are to just jump at something new and and go at it again and so a lot of uh, players just kept playing tech, and and the few players that did actually like um, try to learn it back then, like Carl Jr. and and uh, someone like Papu as well, even though he's not a, a tech player, but the same goes for him, right? So those are the players we see in TMJ right now because they they, they adapted themselves because they 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 knew it would happen or they they wanted it to happen. It's it's not that's that's a big case, right? Like those new players, they they, they see they, they they start with it already, but the old players have to have to make like the decision if they want to adapt or not, and that's also playing a big part in this as well, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, and and it's and you did see that especially when, I mean the, well, of course we have the Zeratorc Cup to credit largely for the introduction of identities, especially identities and the form that they did take early on i mean yeah they are, they are like they are evolving they are changing yeah. yeah identities now is what i wish identities were back then because i think and because i mean l l think of a lot of the kind of players who retired or lost a lot of interest in trackmania with the introduction of trackmania grand league one of the primary reasons for that was the identities you know was the fact that they were, you know, I mean, I remember one specifically where it was like uh, you were on a dirt section, you took a right turn, and it's just a bunch of dirt mounds, and you had to jump from one to oh, one, and you yeah. would bog it. Like that was that was horseshit. That that was absolutely awful. Like you know, whoever it, had though? that idea, is it is it awful though? It was awful. Okay? It was awful. But because there's of consistency facts. in there. No, Maybe. There's not. No, there's not. <laughs> but. But yeah, regardless... Bad players complain, like SRK is saying here, <laughs> yeah? Just adapt, guys. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a difficult... That, that's, a very, that's a very easy approach to that problem, I think. That's, that's like, yeah. you, you can't... You just, you just can't, like, make it that easy, you know? It's not that easy. Mm -hmm. But one of, the, one of the things is, right, see if you had identities like you did now versus... Uh, and, like, you just ported these maps back fucking two years ago when this all came about. I guarantee you, you wouldn't have had that many people having such a negative reaction to it, you know? Because a lot of these players were the kind of players who were playing, you know, casual multi-style cups. You know, your spam weekly cups, your uh, G4 weeklies or whatever, you know, kind of fun cups or whatever. Like, 24-hour race was always kind of multi-style, you know? Uh, but, like, the uh, that's why I think... Uh, when, you know, TMGL came in, it did have a kind of heavier influence to be more showmanship, so to speak, and be more, uh, not, not necessarily be more controversial, but I suppose it inadvertently became a little bit more controversial. So I think, of course, it's, it's definitely not unfair to say that ZRT has had a big influence in the rest of the Trackmania community outside of his own little kind of world he's built but one thing I, I was I was thinking of there while we we're talking about you know how the the ZRT group has came into Trackmania and really kind of taken over the pardon me, taken over the top scene of Trackmania Grand League and Open Grand League through some of their participants especially Open Grand League and I mean you'll go through Open Grand League and you'll just see mounds and mounds and mounds and mounds of French people, or French speakers at least, so, you know, Swiss, Belgian, so on and so forth. But uh, one thing which I think is important going forward is that with the the larger amount of interest coming into this game through the, you know, through the introduction of the new game, through their efforts to kind of uh, maximise exposure through Trackmania Grand League matchmaking, you know, the free access and so on, hopefully this then means that you know, in four or five years' time, that we do have a more multinational representation. 
you know, uh, we do have, like, say, the German scene reviving through the influence of people like Trillix, you know, uh, because, of course, the, the, the German scene was in, in limbo, I, I think, it is, is a bit uh, hard to say, though, but, uh, I mean, it was in limbo for quite a while because a lot of the players who were German were primarily old school, primarily tech-based players. Prim well, maybe not tech-based players, but primarily competition-based players. I mean, we look back at the old Easy Killer lineups, and Easy Killer, essentially, for all purposes, is gone at the moment, and they add players in dark tech and full speed. You know, the hardcore power drivers guys don't don't play actively. Well, all of these players kind of went backwards and kind of went to the old game, so to speak. But hopefully now, with the interest coming in, you know, if I'll just give Germany as an example, hopefully then, in a few years' time, we'll see that translating to more German players coming through the, the system in the same way that we have had French players coming through the Zerator system, coming through these little uh, practice tournaments, joining these little ZRT teams. Although my only concern is coming from that is the fact that ZRT is very, very not exclusive to French people, but it's, I mean, you don't have an English broadcast. Almost everyone in any ZRT team you're going to join is French, and virtually all the teams you're going to play against are French. So I would like to see, uh, you know, I would like to see, I, I wish a German Zeritor would come in. I wish a British Zeritor, well, English-speaking Zeritor would come in, you know. And, uh, you know, that's just my kind of fantasy land of having, uh, you know, more people in this game. I mean, you were there, Turbo, in the past kind of, like, you know, early days of the podcast when we would talk or, or perhaps complain, uh, I, I suppose is probably more accurate, about how the game does... Maybe not so much at the moment, but has definitely felt very French dominated, and ZRT's definitely contributed quite a lot to that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, uh, one year ago, I was actually dual casting the quarterfinals that were played one by one together with Riolu, and that was that was great. You know, it was it was great to do that because we had insane amount of viewers. We had like three thousand viewers at the cast, and it was just on a great level. But I mean, this ex this exclusiveness is it called like a thing so um yeah i can understand that because he's saying it's it's a show but when uh, spam for example was at the zareda cup i think zareda cup four or five and he was casting um that was great i really liked that because you know i was also asking i think someone else i was speaking to him that they they may be i mean there was of course a dream mindset that i had that i could maybe cast the zareda cup semi-final or final of course, everyone has that if he's, if you're a caster, but they were like, yeah, no, this is not working out. But I was like, yeah, OK, but, you know, I'm just going to go more on the technical side. And that's what also the hardcore community is interested in. You know, I would not like crop any viewers of you because most people will not understand it anyway, you know. Uh, but of course, I can totally understand that. But um, we had those things a lot in the past as well with... Um, a lot of events being only broadcasted in uh, French and also some people will not or didn't want a an English speaking cast even though I just yeah offered my duty for free you know I didn't want any money for that cast I'm just interested in the competition and also provide the people who maybe participated in there and are not French speaking or non-French speakers a, a cast uh, but I think this has changed a bit especially also with gamers assembly and also thanks to Necra who is really standing in for that as well as Siremix. They're just like, yeah, of course, we want to have an English cast. Go ahead, cast it. You know, they're very open for that, but not everyone has understood it. And I don't see, or I don't see this one coming in the next Raider Cup edition, maybe with an official cast with uh, maybe someone who's also pulling all the numbers. But um, yeah, also having a, like a very big event, very big English speaking event, that is probably a niche. That is really a niche uh, because this could be very cool. I mean, it's a bit of replicating the Rager, but I think you can definitely do some other things there. And that looks like, or it's actually a good idea, Scotty, that uh, we could maybe think about with some people to maybe translate that someone. Also, crowdfunding works great in Trackmania. We have seen that in the German Trackmania Cup. So, um, you know, there are almost unlimited opportunities in this game. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's one of those ones where, I mean, I definitely can't fault Zerator for anything he's done in Trackmania. I remember through, I think it was 2017, 2018, uh, everyone was 
there, there, there was a wave of a lot of negativity towards Zerator. I think this was around the time where they introduced the new blocks to the game. And, uh, you know, they were quite controversial. A lot of people didn't like them. At least it weren't involved in that kind of scene. And, yeah, there was a kind of wave of negativity towards Zerator. But I think it's kind of... Uh, along the same kind of lines of when we spoke about how virtual kind of grew everyone's viewer base overall and you kind of had the other side of that being that when you would be streaming a lot of people would be asking about virtual it's uh you know it's it's like the thing with zrt you have had the game influenced to a certain degree by zeritor in the sense of you know some of the uh you know some of the choices that have been made in terms of styles or how the you know things not work like not the actual game itself but some like the like you know the tmgl direction perhaps can be influenced not directly it's not as if zeritor's hitting them up and saying oh by the way guys i want this you know it's just necessarily the mood of the community in general now the community uh, as, in a large part, as made up of Zeritor fans, you know, people who definitely who enjoy the Zeritor Cup, who engage very heavily with the Zeritor Cup, and I think it's one of the the, the trade offs in the sense that you do have a significant amount more interest in Trackmania because of Zeritor, but as such, the the game is directed more towards, uh, you know, what his fans like and his fans like the kind of con the, the Trackmania content he puts out. So I, I guess, as you say, it is a bit of a trade off there. You know, it's it's you'll get you'll get one thing you might like, but you'll get one thing you might not like as well. I don't think that the it's ever going to have an English cast again. To be honest, from what I remember. Uh, the the main reason why they didn't have an English cast before is it just simply it doesn't make business sense to Zeritor. Like you know, it, it, his audience is not his audience is exclusively French, pretty much. You know, all the people who are watching his tournaments are either French or they are fans of Trackmania. And mm. the amount of people who will be watching that event who are just simply fans of Trackmania will not come remotely close to comparing to the numbers he'll be pulling on the ZRT Cup. I mean, for our grand finals, we're hitting, what, 10k at most? And he's hitting, you know, 10 times that on his tournaments, his tournaments. So he doesn't give a fuck about, you know, it, it doesn't matter to him. You know, it's... it's, it's and that's a good point, actually. Yeah, so, somewhat. Because like, like, like you said this earlier, he is, he's a businessman. You know, streamers, when they get to a certain point where they can live off of Twitch, you know, you do see the transition and when some of them, quite a lot of them do become businessmen. You know, streamers running events because it generates more interest in their stream, you know, and the content that they're providing. Look at some of the other streamers who have ran events in Trackmania, you know. Uh, that's, well, it's not sp simply been, I want to do this so I get more money. You know, it's it does come into the decision making process. You know, that's just the way how things like this work. But when you amplify that to a man who makes, I'd imagine millions from his streaming. You know, I, I'd certainly imagine that. But that this is this is a man who you know is essentially a business now. You know, it's 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 not just. It, it, it does come down to a lot and what makes business sense, what doesn't make business sense, you know, so but I, I think a lot of this editor negativity, and I think it's quite a good thing that it has kind of waned a little bit because, you know, it has got, got has brought out a good lot of uh, great things to Trackmania, you know, in terms of the interest, and I think a lot of people can agree that without the Zeritor Cup, Trackmania in its form today wouldn't wouldn't be around you know we most likely wouldn't have had a new game uh you know we wouldn't have had you know as far as i understand nadio still have quite a big team working on this we probably wouldn't have that either we wouldn't have a significant part of our community through you know uh lack of kind of uh, well not lack of french interest but a, quite a big downturn i mean one man there in the chat who did tell me he can I got more involved through the Zeritor Cup is actually Mr. Dank Not Fast. But yeah, I mean, it, it just goes to show the impact that the Zeritor Cup's had on the game. And I mean, well, of course, it's it's not been my cup of tea. I, I think it's it's easy, easy to say that it's definitely been a good thing. Yeah, I Obviously, agree with that. Yeah. 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 And we're going to see how this will develop again. I mean, regardless uh, if we are um, yeah, having an official cast or not, I think it is fine because it's always a great event. Also, like from streaming point of view 
or also from a watching point of view, it's always great, you know? If, like, let's say if, if I'm if I'm streaming, then people are just coming, I have you tried all the new maps, and you know, it's creating hype, and that's a good thing in the summer months, because as I said, there's always a hole in the summer months where usually not a lot of interest is in games, because a lot of people are outside, do not want to play, and that's not the case in Trackmania. Usually, it's the hype season again, and then there comes September again with Trackmania Grand Prix. So we have this event, and I think... Um, it is great to see that, and I think we should be grateful to have as Raider in this game. You say grateful, but you basically said that every Trickmania fan is basically forced not having a free summer. Well, it, it's your, it's you your decision. You can always check me. <laughs> Gamers outside? What is that? Yeah, what is that? But I mean, it's your decision if you want to play or not, you know, yeah. after the exams and stuff. But yeah, I know how you, how you mean it. I, I know how you mean it. All good, man. <laughs> but I mean, uh, we have had another event which has been happening very recently. Also an event which holds very deep connections, I would say, for me. At least maybe not this specific kind of edition, but uh, you as well shortly, actually. The first time we met Gamers Assembly hosted <laughs> its summer edition, albeit an online edition, casted by none other than, drumroll, you know, na 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 that way or that right. way. Luckers Turbo, everyone. Catch the Gamers Assembly Summer Edition. Only the final, though. Only the final. That's, that's all anyone watches anyway. Uh, so how did you enjoy Gamers Assembly Summer Edition? What was your kind of overall impression from either what you caught on to or what you casted? I mean, I knew the maps beforehand and times were definitely improving. We had some, um, we had some interesting things going on because, you know, I was... I was looking into the people, into the participants. I think we had 32 participants, where I think not all of them were showing up. That was a bit unfortunate, but I was uh, having some surprises in there, especially that Papu made it into the final, and also Nod. We had Ratchet and Feet also making it into the final again. Uh, but it's great to have this edition again, because, you know, a lot of people were complaining about this format that we've had beforehand. And I think it's great to see this tournament um, taking place like that. We had a great grand final. It was really, really good. It was a good one. Maybe you've watched it, maybe not. I don't know. But if you have watched it, it was... Or if you haven't watched it, definitely check it out. Everything is going on there in this grand final. It was a good battle. Too bad that Carl Jr. and Pack didn't play. But I think they would have had maybe a rough time as well. Of course, they were the contenders for the winning. But still, uh, the others played out of their minds. Mm -hmm. Should I sure. should I mention who was winning it or should I like there's a spoiler yeah. warning now? No spoiler warning for everyone. I believe it was a uh, Ratchet which did win. Uh, Papu second. I know Nod was finalist second. Uh, yeah, that, oh, three Wait. finalist first mm -hmm. actually. Ooh, that's awkward. But yeah, I mean, uh, the, with with the Gamer Gamers Assembly or oh, two late, it's probably already up on screen, but. Uh, yeah, with the, the Gamers Assembly Summer Edition, do me wrong, it was the, the right format as it should have been in the first place. But, I mean, as much as it's great that there's another kind of investment into the Trackmania scene, there's another lovely tournament there that people have had the chance to show their skills at. And one that I think the tech scene really desperately needs at the moment. You know, they need a, they need a kind of showcase event, so to speak. But I must say, really, really poor representation. I mean, we talked 32 players, and that's not even everyone who showed up, you know? Yeah. And when you think of the kind of players who are playing, still playing tech, that didn't participate in something like this, very, very surprising and also very disappointing. I mean, like, no disrespect to any of the players, but this wouldn't have been the same grand final lineup if a lot more people turned up, you know? That's yeah, uh, and, and, and it is a big shame. And, uh, you know, it's, I mean, SRK just holding on to his 10th at G. That's, that's like me flexing because I get fifth at Gaming Winterfest. But that's just if you don't look too deeper into the results that that actually looks good. Okay. That's like Zerator getting fifth at fucking, what was it, the the event in uh, Valenciennes or something. Uh, the, the actual tech clan event that he went to, he got fifth. So I actually share a fifth place, you know with Zeritor, uh, you know, big flex, I can big time you all now, but, I mean, uh, Shorty, I mean, what, what, what did you think about the Gamers Assembly Summer Edition? It's, it, I mean, to me, it was nice to see, as I said, another tech event coming in, albeit, you know, the same kind of event, just a different format, but 
as I said, a little bit of a disappointment for me overall. Yeah, the thing is, uh, I didn't really actually notice that the Game of Assembly is doing like this the second kind of <laughs> competition on the same map pack. I did, didn't really notice anything about that, or let, not, not really at least, like maybe I just overlooked it because I wasn't focused on something like that because I had other issues, but um, I didn't watch it obviously because I'm a man without internet. Or was a man <laughs> without internet a few days ago? No, <laughs> I didn't have the leisure to just watch a, a live stream for multiple hours. Um, but I think um, what what you said with the exposure, um, if if we even want that, maybe like maybe we just don't even want tech tournaments or anything like that anymore, and we just want in, more events in general, and then like TMGL style or just multi style in general. Maybe that's what what would be better for the whole scene because you don't. We kind of don't really want multiple styles because often it kind of splits the community and the player base. But in general, um, personally, what what I would like, I mean, we have a lot of tech competitions still. We have uh, pretty much almost always a team competition running. But now that um, players like Carl Jr. and uh, Spam and even even people like Yannick that, that are big streamers now, um, now that they are like TMGL players and don't play those cups anymore, like we naturally don't have the viewership for those tech events anymore. We, we might have a few small streams or something like that. And obviously we got like uh, um, Turbo streaming the grand final for Gamers Assembly. But um, in general, the exposure itself is just not there because there's not really, there are not really many many streamers anymore doing that or not not enough big events. I don't know. I mean, we, we got we got events, you know, like. The PTC is still ongoing, and it's a quite um, prestigious uh, tech competition. And uh, I don't think anyone outside of the few teams that that outside of the teams that play know about it at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's 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 very it's been quite a symptom of the shift in interest now going towards uh, mixed style. I mean, it just goes to show that that the Trackmania hasn't really been a place where. A lot of styles can coincide together easily. I mean, we saw it when tech was the main style that dirt wasn't getting a lot of representation. You know, a lot of other. Uh, I mean, I think to the gamers assemblies I attended and the the slot uh, the slot difference you would get between a tech tournament getting like 128 people and then a canyon tournament would get eight or something like that. You know. Um, and that's you know it's a true story. And it, but even you would have full speed twelve people, you know, dirt twenty four people, and then tech one hundred and twenty eight people. And it just goes to show that you know even back then, uh, albeit you know, of course we're talking about a LAN event and the rules are a little bit different there. But it's like uh, you, you kind of look at it that way, and it's like it, it didn't work then for other disciplines that weren't tech, you know. The, like dirt wasn't getting a lot of attention a lot of the big streamers weren't playing it other than when they get bored you know uh, same with full speed virtually no one outside of the full speed community covered that uh, rpg events you know barely anyone that wasn't interested in them actually knew they existed you know unfortunately <laughs> uh, which is a shame because rpg events were always very interesting yeah but, true uh, I mean, that, that that just goes to show what it was like before. But now we have even more eyes on the game, more people bringing exposure to the game. But we're still having the same problem as that there's one style which is which is the main focus now in terms of both Nadeo's focus and also the community's focus in the sense of the mixed style through like the campaign being very mixed style and, and, and becoming more competitive as we spoke about last week or the week before. Uh, but also through, uh, you know, Trackmania Grand League being the showpiece tournament now mixed style. Uh, you know, a lot of the, the, as I said, the focus has been towards mixed style. And I mean, we saw what the, the a drop in interest can mean for other disciplines, even if we look at Dirt. I mean, uh, uh, something I've brought up numerous times on the podcast, a lot of Dirt players, uh, well, I'd say they were affected most heavily by the changes in the new game. Tech, virtually not noticeable. Full speed, I'm not entirely sure about, but not that drastic. But Dirt was fun fundamentally changed in the way the blocks appeared, in the way the, the turns were made, and, you know, changing elevations, you know, completely physics. different block sets, different physics, and so on and so forth. And as such... 
you know, a, a large amount of people of the Dutch scene are no longer interested in the new game. And as such, I mean, I honestly can't tell you a Dirt event that's happened in the new game. You know, well, I'm not the most actively involved player in Trackmania 2020, nor am I really casting the game anymore. I So as a casual follower, if, I, if I'll say it like that, I can't think of a Dirt tournament that's happened in a new game. And that's a tragedy when you think how strong Dirt was becoming at the end of TM2. You know, mm. we had we had some very uh, interesting tournaments. Even I, <laughs> even I casted some of them, you know, like... Uh, some some of the duck tournaments that happened back there, Orcs had picked up a duck team. You know, uh, the, we had of course the Fox team, we had Pulse, we had Ubi team who had a duck lineup. We actually had uh, Numalops picking up duck players. You know, we had a lot of people getting involved, uh, even organisations getting involved in duck. And while I'm sure there'll maybe be some kind of like ground level duck tournaments, it's taken. Not a complete nosedive, I would say, but it has lost a massive amount of momentum from what it had at the end of TM2. And while I think that the, the slope is going to be significantly less steep for, for tech, you can see the same thing has happened, you know? I mean, uh, back in, like, I don't know, 2016 or 2018, you would have the amount of teams participating in tech tournaments slowly increasing, I would say, you know, getting up to 60, 70, 80 teams planning, uh, sorry, uh, playing these sort of events. Any sort of solo event that came out of a prize pool would have a, a very much larger amount than 32 people playing. Uh, you know, and, and uh, the Gamers Assembly Summer Edition really kind of showed me not only with how many played, but th the specific names that played, that a lot of the, the top tech players are either prioritizing other things at the moment or they just don't feel the same kind of motivation that they did a few years ago, which is a tragedy for the players that feel a little bit left behind. I mean, whether you would say that they should have went with the multi-style or, you know, whether they should just stay and play with whatever they feel comfortable with, I suppose it's like every style's kind of been left behind at some point or another in Trackmania. You know, we talk about United had a little bit of a resurgence, but then fell behind a little bit. Full speed is going through a resurgence at the moment uh you know not sure entirely what's what stage that is at the moment but at uh, what one point i was going to uh bring in there uh, that eric has then brought up is i think a lot of it comes down to where the eyes are so a lot of your virtually no influencers if i'll just call them that and track mania cover anything but you know what they want to either play or watch and the majority of that is going to be mixed style there is very rarely eyes on other things in Trackmania. There's not a lot of people covering. I mean, we have our podcast now, which we talk about events that we know about, that we find out about. As far as I know, there's a French podcast that Necra and uh, I think Wosile or something like that join with, uh, have a, a few other guests, but I don't know if that continues. We don't really have any more than Eirik as a journalist, it feels like. Uh, the you know, it, it feels like a lot of the the opportunities these places have to get exposure is are dwindling, you know, and as yeah. such, the interest is dwindling. It feels like in these other environments. I mean, Turbo, you've been a bit more active on the ground. I would say, uh, what, what would you kind of say? Is 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 that accurate at all, or or are you getting a different kind of feeling? I would have had different reasons for this, why the Gamers Assembly wasn't picked up. And uh, the first reason is that the map pack has been reused. The map pack was good, but of course, it is hard to pick up a map pack against players like Feet and Ratchet who have been in the final, you know, and they just have to like play the maps for like some more hours, improve a bit, drive a little bit more for the consistency. And it is hard for you to really pick up the map pack again. Then also one thing that was absolutely hilarious was the unreal schedule you want me to play from 14 to 23 are you kidding me on the first day who would actually do that look outside the <laughs> sun is shining who's playing on a saturday on the 5th of june for fucking nine hours who's doing that that's why i didn't cast it and then won the matches on the next day wow the final yeah price pool was great but i think there are a lot of different reasons why the gamers assembly this year wasn't that good it was first c yeah how I mean, the game was the map the maps were very good the price pool was there but why do you use the format 
where like one player is going through from 128 the motivation was decreasing at this point and i think with that the summer edition was also set in stone so i think of course people would be interested the maps were great but not if only one player only one person is going through yeah. you could have seen it in from zero to hero i think that was the best tech tournament that we've ever had where even even top five and six went home with money so how they should have um went with this tournament is maybe split it up onto two or maybe even three days play out the first couple of rounds then maybe release one more map afterwards into the next map pool i don't know or maybe even two maps as we've had in the german trackmania cup and then play this map out because i think the gamers assembly is such a great tournament it has such a great history i mean i was watching gamers assembly 2016 final where the bad boy of the trackmania scene massa has won it you know and it is just the prestige. Yeah, he uh, yeah. Frostburg called him like that. And it was just a such a prestigious event, and it still is, but not with that format and also the reuse of the map. I mean, it was fine, yes, but all only for people who have participated in that. And we had Ratchet, Papu, Feet, and North have played in that. And of course, a player like Shorty, who is definitely on a level like those players, if he practices, would have been maybe motivated. If, if his internet would have been but but you know you get the point you know the motivation for all players who newly picked up the maps has decreased so yeah that was uh, a bit bad but i think that gamers assembly in general was a good thing this year but a little bit underwhelming at the end i mean sure you've attended gamers assembly i believe only one before if i'm correct no 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 twice yeah, 2015 twice. and 2016. oh you done wait no you done a different year because i didn't go in 2016 or did i yeah when when did you go 2017 18 yeah, then, and then i went 2016 and 2017 right okay who, 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 who you were just yeah <laughs> i mean me evidently because i got it right but i mean uh we we've been there we've seen what it's like firsthand at an event like this and and uh the gamers assembly event was very special to me because there was a lot of hype around it when you were there you know i mean i remember i would be watching oh, i mean <laughs> I don't know how many French people I've got sitting here, but I remember you would have specific people who would be like shouting and screaming like Ale yo yo, like people like Zoom and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that and, and 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 so on. Like like people like this Coco would always be hyped up, you know, all of these kind of players. And it really don't get me wrong, it really makes me miss the kind of LAN event kind of style of things. Uh, and but you would have like 30 people crowded behind one person's chair watching them play <laughs> you know oh, you can you can you could feel them standing behind yeah, you that's, yeah, that's you, the you, worst you, part you, about you it could. you're playing and you know it you just know they are there yeah <laughs> I, I remember when i got to the in 2018 i got to the top 16 of gamers assembly and i and i like don't get me wrong i'd had a really horrible day you know nothing to eat like two hours of sleep just <laughs> got off the fucking train at and just went straight to the event, you know, fueled myself in like seven cans of Red Bull, and I was <laughs> shot. I was absolutely shot at this event, and I'd played well to get there, but as soon as I got to that match, everything crashed, and I remember going like, you know, like slamming my hands down, or getting really angry, and like both hands hit someone, you know, because everyone's crowded around me because I was at one of the final matches, because uh, at that point they were running, I think, only two matches at a time or something like that, and I'm like, shit, I've got like so many people watching me here, like this is fucked up, you know, but it's it's like that that was the kind of hype that gamers assembly had when you were there and also people were really engaged in it when it was streamed you know when it when uh people were watching it and also when it came to the matches that were on the stage there was a lot of people sitting there you know at least i'd Over. say 100 to 200 people sitting there easily sit, sitting there you know all with the big fucking stupid balloon things that they had against each other and all that and make a racket it was good you know it was good fun it was good hype you know, um, every everyone enjoyed it. You know, everyone had a good time, and I I don't know if it's me holding it up to the the gamers assembly pedestal that I've been to and that I've experienced, and then feeling a bit underwhelmed by that, or if it's just you know the kind of thing about gamers assembly where you know it's just been the online event or it has genuinely been a bit of an underwhelming event in general. But yeah, I mean. Uh, I don't know about you, Shorty, but how would you kind of comp compare uh, 
the impact, because I know you haven't been able to watch the most recent one, but the kind of online era of Gamers Assembly tournaments in general compared to the ones that we attended? I think, um, I mean, we are talking about this like the, the third time already, like we always come back, come back to like wanting more LAN events again and LAN yeah. events being able to, to be hosted yeah. again. But I think it's actually a combination of both. Like, let's be honest, um, just just the fact that it's a LAN event is, is making things more prestigious. Also, like in, in the live stream, because it's way more professional, it's way cooler than you can actually also see the, the players. Um, sitting there and playing you can also like hear the crowd in the live stream and stuff that, that that's already better but um obviously like we are nostalgic about it right uh, like being there um pers in person and um, experiencing it yourself is definitely something that's that's a big part for it uh, uh, it's it's a big part of it and, and also i can notice that like the other gamers assemblies after i attended um i, I can't remember why i couldn't attend at 2018 but um I mean, I, I didn't care about the Gamers Assembly live stream as well in that year because I I wasn't there myself. Uh, it, I, I, I mean, I was still interested in it, right? But I wasn't like, oh yeah, I've defi I definitely have to follow it. I was like, yeah, if I got something else, I'm gonna do something else. It's uh, that that's just how it goes, I think, in general. It's mm -hmm. it's probably a combination of both, to be honest. I mean, yeah, the 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 organization of the Gamers Assembly just felt not really thought through this year, I guess, with those um two separate events where both had like as as, as you already mentioned different different issues um it's 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 it, it's a bit weird i don't know i mean it, it's it could have been really good i think it could have been definitely a, a rather well hosted event but i think they just came short in in uh in, in host like in in laying the groundwork of the events with the organization and stuff mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that's that's what I, I feel like. I, I mean, yeah, it was underwhelming, but I think that's a big part of why it was underwhelming. It, it didn't even clash with any other events, you know. They had all like they, they had all possibilities they, they needed. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's how how it is to be honest. And I think I mean, so so my my suggestion to them were because i i was a bit more un behind the scenes i was texting to them also to yep. the organizers they were really friendly so props to them they did a great job they just thought about a different concept which is great but i was thinking yeah hmm, does it work out you know there were so many people just just hopping off from the train each step more like there was spam unfortunately not able to play i think even step two and three because you only play a practice casually also play like dutchy you know i'm just mentioning a few here but it is just no. it is just it feels bad man kind of because i would have done it like this you know you have um you have all the four steps and then the top four qualify and if you get first you just have the best seating and you play against second a uh, second third and fourth seated player and then you're going to play it out in a double elimination bracket on a weekend. And then you bet it out for the price. But I think with that, way, way, way more players were encouraged with that. And also, if more players play them, we also had more players at this Gamers Assembly um, Summer Edition, I think. Because just so many people, people were hopping off and lost the interest by just seeing this, in their eyes, maybe not viable format. But I think mm -hmm. they learned from that and also the fact that you've mentioned, I mean, we're always coming back to that land topic. It is a huge factor. It is. It is definitely a huge factor why players are not participating. Because who wants to sit in front of his PC nine hours straight if you look outside and just get depressed not sitting outside? That is my feeling. And that's why I also didn't cast it. Because I could, didn't want to not, not waste it. Of course, it's also interesting and fun to cast that. But, you know, it's a double elimination bracket and um, I didn't want to cast it for eight hours or seven hours or maybe even five in this case because only 24 players showed up. But um, I think it's a mixture of that because if you're in a LAN event, you don't care what weather is outside. You have people and maybe even friends that are surrounding you and you just generally have a good time yeah, beyond the game as well. And that's a great factor that is really, really missing. Mm -hmm. There's the issue, like, if it's an online event, I feel like, no, even if it's a Gamers Assembly, like, there is no real, but it's a Gamers Assembly. It's just another online event. It's it's like any other online event you could also watch, you know? It's it's nothing special anymore if it's not a LAN event in that, in that case, because, like, yes, the matches are interesting, but you can just watch the final or something like that later or something, right? It's If it's online, it's just, like, all tournaments in a way. Yeah, true. 
I mean, we don't know. I mean, it's yeah, something I, that... Uh, hindsight is twenty twenty always. Yeah. It's something that I thought that we've really noticed through some other esports in terms of how their viewership numbers have been going. One that's it's been talked about to death in is Counter-Strike. How a lot of the, the fans of, of professional Counter-Strike are feeling a little bit switched off by pro games or pro tournaments now because it's all just the same thing, you know. It, you'll have, like, the only thing that occasionally changes is the stage, like, you know, the setup that everyone's sitting at, you know. Mm. But it's the, it's the exact, because, I mean, Counter-Strike is a very static scene, if we'll say it like that, in the terms of, especially in the online era, you're going to have normally the same group of teams going up against each other with a few changes. You're going to be playing on the same maps. You're most likely going to have the same group of people there commentating and so on and so forth. But the uh, the issue which people were finding was you would have some tournament that would be like, I don't know, a 40k prize pool or something like that with a good group of teams and you would watch that and you would get virtually the same standard of production as tournaments that were 250k you know you would in some cases have the same teams playing you would have the same uh you would have the same personalities or casters there you know same desks hosts there and uh, as such uh, uh, and a lot of the players themselves we're really missing getting back to the LAN event feel, you know, getting back to not having any of the issues that they're having, you know. Uh, just, of course, Counter Strike's a completely different game in that regard. But I mean, it's it's not some it's not just something that's exclusive to Trackmania that a lot of people want to get back to LAN events, and not only players but also fan bases as well are are just generally kind of getting oversaturated with online events. It feels like, you know. Uh, one thing, uh, I can't remember who it was that said it previously, but, you know, um, and, and it is something I agree with, that LAN events naturally hold more uh, prestige. And, uh, you know, whether you would say significance, I mean, even we talk about Pac being a world champion, even when you consider how poorly organised the Mania Planet World Cup of 2016 was, when the qualifiers were in a fucking closed computer shop, and the final was held in a courtroom, you know. It was we still the worst point of Trickmania. <laughs> <laughs> we we uh, still talk about Pack being a world champion and that still being a great match, though. You know, like that that doesn't take away from the prestige of Pack's achievement. You know, even with the the low the you know the how how weird that competition was, you know, and 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 that's the thing. Like you'll still talk about. Kappa being a winner of Gaming Winterfest, or Massa being a winner of Gaming, be, Massa being a winner of Gaming Winterfest, because there is a certain prestige attached to these events, even though they didn't hold up to the the, the greatest quality standards, you know. So it's uh, it's definitely something which I think needs to happen in future. I'm going to be very disappointed if Trackmania don't want to go down that direction because. Like, the way I look at it, it's been a very, very, very long time since there was a great LAN event ran by Trackmania. Sorry, not ran by N Ubisoft Nadeo, to be very specific with that. Is that ever one? The, like, the, that, that's what I'm thinking, because we've not had... Uh, most of the other events, like, we, we had the SWC, which had its stage, so to speak. Uh, the TM, the Trackmania Pro League wasn't on, uh, was all online. Uh, TMWC, if I'm, if I'm right, uh, was on stage at PGW 2018, but then to quite a small amount of people. Uh, and, and the gamers' assemblies, albeit supported by Trackmania, not directly, sorry, Ubisoft, Nadeo, and not directly involved in, in the organization, has had a diminishing spot in the gamers assembly order you know before it had a big spot in the main stage and then it was getting relegated to the side stage and then it was getting relegated to like a shitty time slot and so on so i think uh you know don't get me wrong it 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 it's especially be very difficult uh i think the last few gamers sorry track mania grand league LAN, LAN event efforts were a bit underwhelming you know when you only had like four people there and not a big crowd there and so on i think the the casting team was remote as well uh, and oh my god, the streaming arrangement for that was disgusting. 
but that's that's an argument for last year. But yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see another great LAN event in Trackmania that isn't just hosted by Zerator, because you know Zerator's going to put something good, so they pull off something good, he always has, you know? Yep. But it's aimed towards a, a very specific group of people. Mm. I want to see a big showpiece LAN event that's international. I mean, God forbid we ever have a fucking LAN event that's outside of France, you know? I'm still waiting. <laughs> Eric, you know, you, you, need, you need to get my back here. But, I mean, it's... it's. I, I don't like to feel like the time has passed for that, but maybe it has, you know? I mean, I, I've, I've thought about some things. Also, like, some uh, good things, like the reverse cup mode, for example. My idea... I have some ideas, but it's just hard to translate them because I just don't want to host yet another online competition. You know, of course... I will do i will be involved in some cup planning again and i want to make a lan event at some point maybe with some members of the community that i'm maybe casting on stage as the reward that i'm that i'm organizing it you know but you know i think after the time we will definitely have lan events again and also new lan events are coming into play i i think that this is not an end of an error so um yeah you can definitely look forward to that and you both are also invited you know we're gonna have a podcast there we're gonna have a great time and paul and me are gonna do a cast it. drunk podcast Boom. yeah <laughs> so oh. basically me every single week <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean uh, there's, a, there's a few other kind of things that have popped up through the last week but i think since we've been here for an hour and 20 minutes we'll give ourselves something to talk about next week as well a little few things uh, that we can still go over and still have been quite interesting but i reckon it's good to call it a night on today's uh, adventures are you going to be hitting up the matchmakings with your with your new friends mr turbo wow yeah with my new and better friend no just kidding oh. yeah I'm, I'm gonna play with uh, janik afterwards Eric, yeah. we need you back <laughs> hey, did he also ditch you or what after he already ditched me what do you oh. mean? You don't... Oh, it's all coming in now. <laughs> just, I'm just going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to rage quit the podcast after rage quitting stream as well. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> all the shades getting thrown here. There's still light in his room, oh. but he's covered in shade. Okay, that was terrible. Lucky he's wearing a white shirt so he can reflect it. But yeah, <laughs> I'm just he, uh, come on, I'm just joking. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's a friendly banter, and also from, of course, <laughs> we are all friends, so that's all good. Hopefully. I'm not even playing <laughs> Trick Mania. <laughs> yeah, and that's the case. I was Bye. asking you, yo, you want to play matchmaking? Yeah, I don't know the campaign maps. What, what, <laughs> Mister Useless? You're feeding. Mr. Oh, I'm a fast learner. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, you asked me if you want to play, and I was like, yeah, sure, but I didn't know any maps, and then you just didn't respond, and I was like, yeah, okay, well, then I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> feels bad, man. That's what that is. That is a feels bad, man. Bit Have you got to gotta do it, like, uh, how, how many more days under the next campaign? Yeah, you can wait for the next one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wait for Shorty to not train for that one either. <laughs> I actually, I'm, I'm doing the speedrun always. Like something that I, I really like that um, there's like a speedrun competition. Every single time there's a new campaign and it's basically just about getting all author medals as fast as possible. Um, I'm really shit at it, but <laughs> it's a good way of, of, of forcing myself to um, actually uh, playing those maps. I thought I'll you were a fast learner. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fast learner, but not I'm, I'm not really good on the deal maps. Oh, well, okay. The excuses are coming out now. <laughs> I'm just washed up myself as well. <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm just getting old. Oh, don't say that. Then I'll start feeling old. And that's not good. <laughs> when I start feeling old, because I start complaining and getting grouchy and shouting at people. Yeah, I'm already I'm already at that phase. It's too late for you. So, so I'm, is... already, I'm already getting so many comments on Kanati's YouTube under the video. <laughs> it was like, every time when I watch it and I want to see it, dude, every time I hear Toby speaking, he's like complaining and I'm like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> it's not even that often. It's just the, no. last, couple, it's just the last two weeks or so. I had, I had a really positive face before that. 
That's yeah, true. Okay. That's true. Yeah. But you, you know, you know what it's like in track mania. It's like the awards. No one ever remembers what you did more than three weeks ago. You know, that's just how it works. That's the internet. Yeah. Any other points you guys wished to bring up or discuss? No, nah, I mean we're gonna today? we're gonna talk about the test thingies um, next week. Yeah. Uh, because I think also a lot of things will change there. We had a great runs. So that will be up for next week. And I think two topics are enough. I mean, we've just gone from the Radio Cup and also other things to Gamers Assembly and all LAN events again. So it was great. Again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's good. But of course, I always be feeling a bit depressed when I was thinking how good LAN events are, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But sure. yeah, that's it from my side, actually. So I don't have anything to add. Sure, he's got nothing else, and he's just gonna go back to his his gym. Oh, just, 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 just. Uh, let, let's just stop. I want to like know how to how it feels with good internet again. I want to do stuff <laughs> I, I could have done. No, I, I I have no idea what to do. I actually got university stuff. So <laughs> when you're not lagging, so yeah, I'm not lagging. Great, yeah. right? Yeah, I know he's a, he's a new man. Now. Look at him. Yeah, I hope it's the same next week when I'm when I got back uh, when I get back at home. <laughs> I don't say that now. Now you've cursed it. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's already it, it's already cursed. It's Germany. It's, it's fucking Germany. It already was cursed to begin with. That's fair. But yeah, guys, that has been it for us in episode number what I think is 32. It's been a long time since I've looked at it. Uh, of course, brought to you as always by ESAC.gg. But a reminder also to check out the fact that the new campaign or sorry the current campaign is now being used and i believe it's early showdowns which you can find at play.esac.gg if i'm correct otherwise everyone's going to fire me but otherwise uh, guys i'll just remind you to check that out and uh, check out some of the early showdowns which will be uh, coming up and ongoing also when the new campaign comes out some opportunities to play with friends and against friends but otherwise Otherwise, we're going to be here next week, same time, same place as always. It is going to be it from us. There is still some mode to come of light outside, so I don't know. Maybe I'll look out the window or something like that. I don't know, cry myself to sleep or shout myself to sleep, depending on what mood I'm in. But otherwise, guys, uh, Luckers Turbo will be streaming later on with his new friend, J Nick J or whoever he is. I mean, he... <laughs> J Nick. Yeah, that one. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> He's not part of the podcast, so I don't care. Anyway, you can join. Ugh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> can replace you, maybe. <laughs> oh, and but have yeah. more time to do useful things. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. At least I'll have someone better to look at then. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have Guys, that to <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that has been it from us, ladies and gentlemen friends and gently men have a spectacular evening the rest of your day the rest of your week or don't i'm not your dad but see you all next time and goodbye for now see ya